Hi y'all, so we're going to switch to using the big camera probably for the remainder of the season because the GoPro just does not cut it this time of year when we're getting close to sunset. The picture's just way too grainy for my taste. And so there might be a little shakiness, but the image quality will be much better, which is what I prefer. So welcome back to the garden. So there's been a, quite a bit of transformation since I shot my last video, which I haven't even edited yet, so if there's a little repetition in this video, uh, I apologize in advance. The weather, once again, has been really crazy. Yesterday it was 91, 92, and right now it's like 65 degrees. And so I have my sweater on for the first time uh, this year, this fall. It is officially fall, which is my favorite season. And we are going to approach a low of 42 tonight, which is crazy that the temperature is dropping that quickly. So this weekend, I didn't come out today to do anything but this weekend is going to be like the Hunger Games of transplanting shrubs, I think. Uh, I got some things transplanted this past weekend and some evenings after work very quickly. But I think I'm going to try and finish the majority of what I have left this coming weekend just so those plants can get settled in. Come here. You want to be on video? So this is Leal. I've showed her before on video. She had her little girl dog surgery earlier this week. Um, so we're trying to keep her separated from her sister and her little brother. And she's doing really good. We had it done laparoscopically, which you can have done now. And it's not as terrible on the females. She's doing really good. It just happened two days ago. And recovery period is only about two days uh, with limited activity. And then normal activity can return after that. And then within two weeks, they can have their stitches removed. She probably has like a total of five stitches and three tiny, tiny little holes, which is really interesting. But... Let's go take a look around the garden right quick. So a few things I done, you can see behind me right here. So I went ahead and cut down this Baptisia. I haven't moved it yet. I'm going to be doing that this weekend probably. And I don't think I'm going to be putting it in the garden. I think I'm going to be using it as a cutting plant for foliage and blooms in the spring going forward. So it's going to go back in the cutting garden. Uh, there are a few more things I'm going to be removing here. These daylilies I'm going to be removing. I've got... Um, some other things. Oh, the storm cloud Amsonia, which is right in front of this rose bush, which is the poet's wife. And I extremely, extremely cut back some of my rose bushes. And I'm going to be doing that to a couple more because they have gotten really out of hand. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be pulling up this rose. It's one of my favorite in the garden. And I'm going to be transplanting it this fall. I don't think it gets as much sun as it loves there because it's competing with other plants. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transplant it along this fence right here behind me and that way it can get full all day sun. Uh, the issue I'm experiencing with some of my roses, I'm also going to be moving Lady of Shalott because it is just simply too large. I just cut it down the same way and it is it was almost seven foot tall. It was taller than me and I'll take you up there and show you where it was at right quick, just so you can remember. It was not greatly priced. It was last year when I planted it here, but it's right here next to this dogwood. And so you can see I cut it down very severely as well. Roses can take a beating and I actually cut this one down this much or even more in spring because I had a lot of die off on this variety over winter. And so I'm gonna be moving that one to the backyard as well. And I'm gonna put it also along the fence Lady of Shalott, I mean, I don't know if y'all have had this issue with any of your roses, but they always seem to end up way bigger than what the tag says. And if you look on David Olson's website, which I didn't realize until this week, it says it gives their size, but there's a little like information thing beside that. And it says the size is estimated to be in June after the first full flush of blooms. And so while I've cut Lady of Shalott back a couple times this year, it is just growing way too big for that spot. And it's not blooming great there. I've got some pretty good blooms here and there, but nothing in a significant quantity like I see online and hope for. So I'm gonna put it back here. It's gonna be kind of behind this willow, but this area still gets quite a lot of sun in the evening, at least for the next few years. And it can also be kind of against the fence and trained up a little bit right there. I think it might do a little better job, at least for the next few years. I might change my mind and find somewhere else to put it in the next couple of years, and then I can move it again. Roses transplant, in my experience, pretty easily. Uh, and so one of the reasons I moved both of these roses was because of their size and how they were growing. 
And I also had a Charles Darwin rose up here on the other side of the steps, which had not done well at all. The first year I planted it, it completely died. I got a replacement from David Alston. I did not uh, get a warranty replacement because that was when I was having the soil, clay soil issue up here and several of the plants were struggling. I paid for that replacement, but I just dug it up yesterday because one, the bloom color didn't match what it said online like I selected, and it was not performing great at all. So I've hardly had any blooms on it since it was planted there two years ago. So pulled that one up. This is the time of the year that I mentioned. I think I mentioned this in my prior video or a video ago. I'm going to start editing the garden to the extent there are plants that are not doing good. I'm going to remove those give them to someone else to the extent I can find someone that wants them or trash them to the extent I can't just so I can start getting some things in here that I love. And so as part of that, I've also pulled out some Gara this week. Uh, I love Gara, but I haven't seen that it's done a very good job the past two years. I don't know if it's a short-lived perennial. The first year I grew it from seed, it did really well and was really beautiful. This year it became really woody and last year it became really woody and this year a lot of it died off and so I just went ahead and removed those garas. The garas that I have left in the garden are these red ones right here. They're called crimson butterflies I think down here and I might also end up removing these as well. They've not bloomed great for me even though these get full sun and they look kind of messy to me. They have these long strands with no blooms on them and then this weird foliage, it almost makes it look to me like they're sick. And I don't, that's just the, just the look that I get from them. And so we'll keep these alliums here and I might tuck something else in here, but this stuff should fill in pretty well. We have the Calamantha, which I'm kind of thinking about coming and cutting completely back in preparation for fall. Uh, it is still blooming though. It still looks pretty good. Not as good as it looked about a month and a half ago, but it has bloomed nonstop since I planted it. And it's, it's it's a really powerhouse perennial. One of my favorites that I've added to my garden and that I will probably always have uh, after seeing it perform this year, even from a plug. And so I still highly re recommend this one. This is just the species variety. It does smell minty if you run your hands along it. There is another variety down here, which Great Garden Plants sent out to me earlier this year. It's called Marvelette and it has little blue flowers. It hasn't gotten quite as big for me, but it was planted later in the season. It will probably get a little bigger next year, but it also smells really wonderful when you run your hands through it. It's this time of year that I think I was having the same issue last year where I found all these perennials I like, that the perennials are looking really rough and I'm like, Matthew, why don't you just find a shrub to replace those perennials with? But I'm trying to hold out on some of that. Uh, I do want to take you over and show you some development in the south side garden bed against the house. It's looking really good. I think I've used all shrubs in that location so far, and I might still seek out a few shrubs to finish it off. There are a couple perennials like a grass and um, the back and black sedum, but we'll walk over there and take a look at that in a minute. For now, I want to show you this Proudberry Coralberry. So Proudberry Coralberry, I've mentioned many times, is one of my favorite shrubs. Uh, I'm getting some weird, I don't know if it's reverting or what, but some of the berries this year are white, which didn't happen last year, but you can see down there we might have a little bit of reverting. I don't know how that works because proud berries or the coral berries, they're also called snow berries, I think is kind of the generic name for them, traditionally came in white, and so they were white berries. This pink is interesting and I really love it, but there's a little bit of reversion. It doesn't look bad, uh, these work excellent in arrangements and last a really long time. That's one of the reasons I grow it, but it also grows really quickly. And so if you find a four inch container um, somewhere easily, or if you buy it from the garden center, it will fill out for you really quickly. Something else I wanted to ask y'all, if y'all have any in your garden are the Rose of Sharon's. My Rose of Sharon still has a bunch of unopened buds this year. Uh, they seem to still be blooming a little bit, but it just seems like a really unusual amount of unopened buds. So you can see all of these that haven't bloomed yet on here. We are still getting a little bit of bloom, but it just seems unusual to for these to not have bloomed out around here yet. I don't have like an extensive experience with Rose of Sharon. My neighbors has several of them on their property. One's right here. 
that's really pretty. And there still has buds on it too as well. So I don't guess it's necessarily an odd thing. It just seems kind of late in the season to have that many buds on it. I can't remember a year where that's happened previously, but I've not paid a whole lot of attention in the past. This Bobo Hydrangea hedge is looking really nice this year. I underplanted it with Red Rover Hookera all the way down here. Uh, and I think it looks really nice, especially as we're entering fall. Those kind of look like leaves that have fallen off trees that are um, colored up. Now, bobos are a smaller paniculata, uh, but they can get bigger than three feet. Most people think they stay pretty small. You can see here how tall the new blooms on this one are. And if we hadn't had those hard rains in the early or late summer, these would probably be standing up a little better. But these are easily up to my chest. And so if left unpruned, they will get pretty large. They don't have the strongest stems I've noticed of other paniculatas like the limelight prime down there has really strong stems they also have pretty big blooms and so you can see how thin some of the stems are in there they will get bigger over time but i think because it produces a, such a volume of blooms that a lot of the new stems on these happen to just be old wood and so they don't hold their blooms up the best i wish they did a little better job but i still don't hate it all the new blooms that are coming in you can see this one's fairly new. It's still got a lot of white on it, but these older ones match perfectly with these hookra. We'll talk a little bit more about this spot since I'm walking back by it. So I'm going to remove that rose, like I mentioned. So all of this stuff is going to come out. Uh, the barberry is going to stay. Uh, the nandina is going to go here. Uh, that's, um, I don't remember the name of it, but I'm going to be planting it probably this weekend too in this area. I may leave this completely open through spring um, so I can get some ideas. It might be a place to add annuals. I don't add a whole lot of annuals in the ground because they haven't performed great. Or I can find some new smaller shrubs to put in here as well. I found some really cool ones I'm going to show you in just a minute. To replace this rose that I mentioned I'm removing, I'm going to take a boxwood that's in, a, in the patio up there and put it here to kind of add some weight to this corner because it'll need something uh, nice evergreen here because I do have those evergreen balls on that side. And so I think a nice evergreen form right here will also be really nice. And as this tree grows up, there's gonna be more shade here. So something that blooms may not do great there anyway. So I left these kale in my cleanup video and they have become extremely infested and diseased. And so I'm gonna end up having to remove them as well. Uh, I was hoping I would be able to cut them down, and I might still try to completely cut them down and let them grow back, but they are looking really, really rough. You can actually smell them. It's kind of gross, but you can kind of smell them rotting when you walk by them because they're so overcome with disease pressure right now. All right, and the moment I've been waiting for, because I put all these shrubs in the other day and I've been really excited about how they look and how I think it'll turn out, in the years to come. But we'll just have to see and let this grow on. The lighting conditions in this area is really odd. It gets a little morning protection from the spruce here, the big spruce. It doesn't get afternoon sun, but during like midday when it's right overhead through probably four or so o'clock, this area bakes. Um, so it's really a difficult lighting situation for plants. And so let me show you what it's looking like now. So you'll have to excuse all the heavy rocks and clay I found down here while digging. So this is some of the clay that we have in the ground. It's just this gray, it's hard as a rock almost, but it's not. Like this is a rock, this is clay. And this is why I have some issues, particularly on this side of the house. I'm not sure why, uh, but that's really bad. It may have been from when the basement was dug or whatever. But look at this vignette of color here. So let me back up a little bit and I'll go over some of the things that I put in here. So this area is left open a little bit, so I'm not sure what I'm going to put here. These are the Maimone Purple Effect Wygela that I moved from the backyard. I had three that were growing kind of close to the monkey grass that I planted there. And I think they'll be a nice highlight of foliage. And so there's not, there are stuff that bloom in this bed, but it's not something that I was focusing on. I was focusing mostly on season long interest. And so I just picked a lot of stuff that had different uh, textured foliage and different colored foliage. And so I moved this rose standard that I had out front over here because I didn't like how it was and it was better than 
throwing it away and so I'm going to give it a chance here to fill this space. Directly in front of that I did end up moving the lemony lace elderberry and it did not transplant well at all but it just got really hot this past week. As I mentioned it was just 90 something yesterday and these plants did not like it. This has fared pretty well from transplant. It did lose some of the blooms that were going into color but it's not drooped the past few days even though we've not had any significant rain in over a week. I do have the lemon lime nandina that I pointed out in my last video, the blue kazoo spirea, which is down here. Uh, since that time, I have picked up this, which is a fire chief arborvitae, I think. I don't think this was in the last video. Fire chief is not one of my favorite shrubs, and it hasn't been for years, but when I spotted it at the garden center, I was, I was like, you know, I'm gonna try something different. And so I brought it home, and I'm really loving it. You might find another one of these in my garden somewhere else. I think I'm going to end up picking up another. It's a really beautiful texture. Pairs really nicely with my new favorite Wygela and might be my most favorite shrub this year. Uh, this is Midnight Sun. The foliage alone. I don't buy this for its blooms. I'm not even sure what the bloom color is. But it stays this red color all year. And it's really hard to find something that stays this red color. Uh, and you know stay small so it's a beautiful addition here and i'm probably i've already got one of these in the garden i might end up having to put more of these elsewhere it takes a really good alternative as a coleus it's really gorgeous and this is a groundhog chokeberry and so it does produce little berries i didn't get it because it um, is this beautiful blooming thing. The blooms are kind of insignificant. I do have a lot of berry interest on that side, on this side. So we do have the Monrovia uh, St. John's Ward and then the Brandywine Viburnum back there. But this is just a really, really low hugging ground cover. And so that's what I'm looking for. Tiny shrubs that'll cover this space and fill in nicely. A lot of these get two to three foot tall and wide and they're planted pretty closely. But my goal is not to see soil in this location, and I really want to be successful in that. And I think if you can't see soil and just all this beautiful foliage, it'll just be really, really nice. And so I probably need to come through and split these irises up. They're looking a little rough. But you can just see here the, ba the black sedum. Next year, this is its first year as well, so it looks kind of rough. But I think next year it'll look really nice. And then we'll just have blues, yellows, reds foliage and red blooms. This is the Reminiscent Series Rose that I showed you a few videos ago. Now this has been bloomed out for a few days, so uh, it's not the best looking right now considering it's gone through all this heat and I haven't fixed the drip over here, but uh, I'm really loving it so far. And so we'll have a pink rose there. Uh, this is Distant Drums, which I showed in the last video as well, so it'll be pink, orangey, and I think this is just coming along really nicely and better than I expected it to. Like I said, I need to find something right here, and I might end up just sticking something evergreen right here, and I might stick more evergreens in like smaller locations because I do want some winter interest on this side. There's not a whole lot going on in winter on this side. Since it is winter, I don't come by this area of the garden hardly ever, so it's not a huge deal. Uh, but I would like something like this fire chief is gonna be really nice winter interest, I think. So uh, to the extent I can find any other things, I've been looking for really small ewes. I was a bit turned off by ewes when we bought this house and when I started gardening because we had some really huge yew hedges. In fact, this was used right here, I believe, or it may have been the spruce. I think this was two huge ewes grown together. Uh, it's kind of hard to find a really small ewe that still doesn't get three to four foot wide. If anyone knows of a ewe that stays really small, like maybe two to three foot tall and wide, I know they can be pruned pretty well and kept their shape pretty good, uh, but to the extent it stays smaller originally to begin with and doesn't have the urge to grow super big, that would be great. I've been looking online recently and I can't find anything yet. I haven't done anything, any significant deep diving though, looking at shrubs. That's about it. So not a ton of stuff. I haven't worked out in the yard a ton this week because it was so hot and I knew this cool weather was coming and then I'd be able to be out here longer and get more done. This is like my favorite time of year, as I mentioned, and it's the perfect time to plant stuff. It's easy for me to be out here all day doing stuff during the weekend and I just need a couple days to run through some of this stuff so I can get these projects accomplished because bulbs will be arriving in the next couple weeks I think 
So I'll need to be preparing where I'm putting those and I'll be doing a video on that. And I have another project that I don't know that I'm gonna to get to this winter or this fall yet, which I mentioned in my last video. I'm still gonna do a video on it, whether it happens this fall or not. Um, but the actual project itself may not be undertaken to the spring, depending on timing and weather. With well, as cool as it's getting so quickly, we might have to wrap up this garden season earlier. But thank you guys for joining me. And remember, in a world full of hate, be a light. Take care, everyone. Bye.